Hey guys, we are back at it again in the Steve Vai album review series. And big announcement, um, I'm sure you guys probably already know who watch it, but I just discovered that Vi's album is coming out this month at the end, I think like January the 28th. So, you know, I already knew he had an album coming up and, uh, you know, because of the singles and stuff. But I, you know, I figured the album would be like mid this year or later this year. No, it's coming this month. So just like in the Al uh, Iron Maiden album review series and ranking, I'm going to be able to tack that on to this series here. Do album review of it and then feature it in the ranking. So I'm super, super hyped about that. Perfect timing, you know. It happens again. So I'm just, I'm really glad uh, that that's going to be coming down. And, you know, that's a cool way to start off a year is with a um, Steve Vai uh, album coming out. So with that being said, though, today we're looking at Vai's first, you know, album post uh, David Lee Roth and White Snake. You know, so he got more famous at this point. Um, Passion and Warfare. One of my favorite album covers of all time. It's just got really, really cool imagery going on. Kind of, you know, kind of trippy imagery. I love his guitar. I have a guitar strap that looks like that. That, like, in the color scheme of that beautiful Ibanez right there. Um, but yeah. So, the first two, you know, Vi albums, they came out before he was really that big or anything, you know. Or had a lot of, you know, notoriety to his name. Um, but... Because, you know, he had just, he was fresh coming out of Fr uh, Frank Zappa. Had a lot of experimental stuff going on. You know, really cool though. Really cool stuff. But just totally, a, a lot different than um, than stuff that he would do later on here. Like on this year. Like this is a pure instrumental album. It's got like some spoken word parts like voices and stuff for interludes. But no lyrics um, as far as like singing or anything go. Because there actually are lyrics to these songs. These instrumental songs. That, that it's kind of a different you know, different thing to do is include lyrics to him, but, like, it's just pretty much the way I take it is just, like, um, his thoughts while he was writing songs, like, the, you know, kind of the poem to go along with the song, but they're not meant to be sung or anything like that. This is just a straight-up instrumental album. And with that being said, um, you know, we will hop right into it. We get Liberty, which is really, really cool opening just, you know, kind of showing off a little bit, doing some cool scales and stuff, really patriotic kind of feel. It's kind of a short one, and um, just, a, just a really fun opening. I like Liberty. Um, the production, as you'll see um, this track and throughout the whole thing, is just phenomenal. Steve produced it himself. He, um, you know, he wrote and arranged all this stuff by himself in his personal studio, which is just really cool. He, he's, he's a hell of an artist, you know, and likes... Loves just taking control and doing the stuff, with, you know, like how he wants to do it. So he takes it into his own hands, you know, and it's just really cool. I, I admire him for that. Um, but, yeah, the production is just really clean. It's got a lot of cool sounds going on. Um, that that still remains from the Flexible and Flexible Leftovers um, albums. Is those kind of wacky, you know, um, kind of sounds and stuff he can do with his guitar and everything. So Liberty opens it up. Really, really cool sound song. Kind of sounds like a national anthem or something going on. It's <laughs> it, it's it's a fun one. Then we go to track number two, and man, oh man, uh, erotic nightmares. Just whew, you talk about a song that is a trip, man. This one just opens up with kind of a cool little riff thing going on, and then it just you get this boom, just big slide like out of nowhere from Steve, and then it's just on. All kinds of different tones and stuff going on and just little um licks and stuff he's throwing in but like even though it's chaotic it all you know it all just is synchronized it's like chaotic synchronicity in a way like it works weirdly enough even though it's just chaos and then you get this beautiful breakdown that just it just man these effects going on in the background in these really weird kind of minor tones and bends that steve's doing and then you get the really pretty, you know, parts going on. And then we're right back into the Shred Fest, which I love. So Erotic Nightmares is one of my favorites off here. The first time I ever heard that song was like, actually, years and years ago, we were playing, uh, me and my brothers were playing like this Guitar Hero Flash game on the computer. And that was one of the songs um, on there was Erotic Nightmares. So we were like, oh my God, this is nuts. You know, so that, that that's definitely one of my favorites. Then we get the animal and man oh man that's oh that's a classic i saw him play this one live and it was just something else it's got this really really catchy and hooky riff to it um and it's got just some really solid drum playing from it looks like a uh, chris frazier which i don't know who that is um exactly as a as a drummer i, never, I don't think i've ever heard his name 
Um, but I do know the bass player on this, uh, Stu Ham. I do know who that is. Um, but anyway, he's, uh, yeah, Steve um, just tears up this song here, The Animal, and just, I love, like, after the first kind of run he does of, like, the, the main melody and riff, it's like he does, like, this little high note, and then, like, back down to scale, and then back down there, and then starts going at it again. It's kind of hard to explain, but, like, if you, uh, man, if you listen to the album, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, and it's just a, such a cool thing. It does a little shred part to it. And, he, and a lots of just, you know, wild, like, echoes and calls on this one. And it's just, it, it, this track is as vicious as an animal. So it's very fittingly titled. It's just, it's a heavier track off here for sure. And I just freaking love it. Then we go to Answers, which is fun little uh, track here. Um, man, that, that's another solid one off here yet again. That's just, you know, kind of follows suit to the, uh, to kind of the theme that's going on here with just kind of the main kind of, melodies and hooks going on and then you know it just kind of fades in uh out to like and in between here there's kind of some spoken words parts uh like i said and it's just like that with um the animal and the in answers and i think there's one after erotic nightmares i can't remember exactly what all of them say or anything off the top of my head but i remember like the ones i remember that really stand out to me i'll i'll let you know but um answers another really cool song then we get to uh, man this one like is front runner is one of my favorites off here the riddle what a this this one's got like such a big bass noise to it from this uh again this guy who I don't really um or no I was thinking the drummer I didn't know but uh Stu Ham just tears it up with this huge bass thump going on and then um just a really cool bluesy kind of beat to it and the drums are going great and it's just got this this beautiful groove to it and then he starts picking it up you know doing a little shredding over this heavy bass and drum work going on with the riddle and then at one part, then we get like this crazy little shred part. And then it gets really soft, almost, I think he may be even playing a sitar at this one part um, going on here in the breakdown. And then these beautiful harmonics, which I love Steve Vai's harmonics that he does. Um, he, you know, he's inspired me in, in, that, in that way. He has some of the prettiest harmonics ever. And I love playing, um, throwing harmonics in with my playing and stuff like that a lot. Um, and then, um, oh yeah, there was also this really cool part here at the end of the riddle where like um you get kind of like you get this male voice uh which i think i think is david coverdale speaking as the male voice throughout here uh for the most part except where steve does it um i know he does it on for the love of god the ending of that which we'll talk about but i'm pretty sure it's him here too it sounds like him uh david coverdale of course lead singer white snake deep purple um you know but he, and he says uh the male voice which uh, again could be david on this one um says let's make love then you get kind of this weird kind of thing going on, um, almost Egyptian sounding, um, sound that Vi's got going on here, and it almost sounds like a record playing backwards, but it's not, it's just the way, like, not in like the crazy, like, scrambled way, but just like the way his guitar's moving, it's almost like he's backwards sliding it, or, I don't know what he's doing, but it's just so freaking cool, um, and then you get a female voice that says, we'll make love, and then it goes into something kind of different, and it just, man, more of those really cool, um, very bright sounding harmonics and then you get a wild like freaking screech and back into the shredding and the heaviness the drums kick it up the bass kick it up and it just gets heavy as all get out so the riddle is one of my favorite freaking songs off here then we get um ballerina 1224 and this is a really kind of fun one kind of a short one here you talk about harmonics and light playing on here it's real quick and short and it starts off with like this this woman saying ballerina something and then a baby like kind of like crying or something. It's pretty funny. So there, some of that kind of humor stuff does carry over from flexible and flexible leftovers. Then it's just, you get like this crazy, it sounds like a harp, but it's, you know, it, it, it's not is what's crazy. And it's just going on. It's just his beautiful, like going down and like strumming down and up on these crazy, like high pitched stuff in this really cool aquatic alien like sounding um, guitar tone he's got going. And then you get like this crazy, like, chicken chicken picking or something going on on this like freaking like on clean guitars in like in, in that really weird tone that makes just for such a cool little song i i really love that one one of my favorites off here as well then we get for the song that he's mainly known for of course we're talking about for the love of god and man what an epic song i mean i remember he fasted for like a day or two or and like didn't sleep for a day or two before writing this and, and, and then like it just came to him and he wrote it so 
really, really powerful stuff, and you feel every ounce of emotion in this. That's one of the things he's best at. People, you know, a lot of people who just hear his name don't haven't really listened to him. They're like, oh, it's just crazy shredding stuff or something. But no, I mean, he's one of the things he's best at, in my opinion, is just invoking the emotion in his playing. And for the love of God, it just has all of the emotion in it, man. It's just from just the uh, opening note and the little kind of main melody that's going on here. It just, oh, the way he holds those notes, it goes at it. And then he gets even higher up there. And then you get more and more kind of shreddy stuff going on. And just, it, it just, all this song has just the most perfect flow to it, I tell you. And then um, we get kind of a breakdown here that's just more kind of, I mean, it's a little bit lower toned, um, but really shreddy stuff. And then again, it picks right back up, like with this insanely fast picking and just crazy, crazy slides going up and down until this, it just peaks out in this chaotic way with one of those epic, just high pitched slides. And then with, uh, uh, and then does that main melody. It's up way higher down the, you know, way lower on the neck. I mean, and just, oh, absolutely freaking beautiful. That's one of the best damn in instrumental songs I've ever heard um, by anybody. And one of my favorite songs by Vi Period, even though that may be his most known one or whatever. Uh, but I don't, you know, it's just, I mean, you're not going to hear it on the radio, you know, <laughs> like, um, but it's just incredible, incredible stuff. Let me hop on over to side two with probably the funniest one on here. We got, uh, we got the audience is listening, which is kind of like telling a little bit of a story here. And it's like, um, it's like, you know, Vi as a kid, you know, going in for show and tell, you know, kind of being nervous or shy or whatever. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I forgot to talk about at the end of For, for the Love of God that it is confirmed David Coverdale on as the voice here. And it was um, him saying, like, very profoundly and very epically after, you know, that beautiful song ends. He says, finding the line between pagan and Christian, which is just such a cool line, you know, to tack in on there at the end. Very profound sounding, especially from, like, this, the calm, you know, British voice from, uh, or English accent, you know, of, uh, David Coverdale. So it just adds to a really cool finish that song. Now on to side two and the audience is listening. Yeah. It's like the story, you know, he goes in there playing show and tell saying he's got a kid playing him in here, um, as the voice saying that he's gonna, um, you know, be a rock star one day and all this. And then they let him play a teacher tells him to turn it down. He's just shredding away going crazy. This one was another one that was a hit because of the music video, which has Steve, Steve Vai's son in it, you know, playing him as a kid, um, just going to town and, you know, it, then everybody hears sound effects of like the kids just going nuts because he's playing and the teacher's screaming, turn it down. You'll never make it blah, blah. blah. And then, so it, it's just a really, really cool, um, really, really cool song and kind of a funny one, um, on here. So that, that one is definitely the one that sounds the most like something you'd probably find on flexible or flexible leftovers. Then we get um, I Would Love To, which is another just beautiful, beautiful song. Um, I love the melody on here and the keyboard. Go that the keyboard and synth playing on here is incredible, too. Um, and it's really prevalent on here on I Would Love To, just this kind of cool little keyboard thing going on in the back. And then just this super, super, one of the hookiest melodies off here, in my opinion, um, going on. And then, like, at one part, after, like, some, you know, cool stuff going on there, shredding-wise and uh, riffing with that melody and just go into town, you get um, Steve actually talking this time and saying, I look you in the eyes, and then I say, and then there's a pause, and then he pops right back in with that awesome melody. So I, this is such a cool thing. He just, man, I love when he does stuff like that. Really, really cool. And then we open, then the opening of this next song is a, um, some like a, the kid voice, sounds like the same kid who was talking on uh, the audience listening, saying, um, I remember this one, he's saying, uh, this is a ballad that I wrote about love, peace, and good happiness stuff. So it's kind of a funny little, you know, interlude here. And then it opens up to probably my favorite off here. I would probably say this one. I mean, again, it's very hard, but this one, I mean, I play this one a lot um, and listen to it all the time. Uh, Blue Powder, and what a cool, bluesy vibe this one's got going on. Um, this just incorporates all kinds of cool stuff into it. And you just get this, like, wailing, like, opening um, that Vi is doing on this slide and, uh, that just sounds so bluesy and the drums and the bass are going with this bluesy beat. And I love after this one, um, after that first kind of verse, there's like this crazy little shred part. And then, um, and, uh, then there's like a clean tone and like the bluesy kind of guitar tone, a little bit of a strum there. 
and then and then back to that freaking howl and man then it just goes nuts on the shredding over this cool bluesy bluesy tone speed picks up a little bit then you think it's over at one part and then it's just right back into it and then just keeps on going man um it just it's such a power and then it ends up ending on like the bluesier more um softer and you know methodical playing note so just such a cool song one of my favorite vice songs of all freaking time oh and also because i was about to say uh, i wish he would have played that one live whenever i saw him he didn't but he did play um you know like i say he played the animal and he played uh for the love of god um live of course that's like a staple of his live stuff and i think that may have been the only the only two he played live off of this album um but anyways then we go on to a uh, greasy kid stuff which is kind of a two minute little you know short riffy kind of shreddy thing going on with some kind of funny uh spoken word part at the end where it's um you know it's like there's like a female voice that says uh now that's uh not greasy kid stuff or that's just greasy kid stuff i can't remember but it, it's really cool fits on there then we get one of the most beautiful songs i've ever heard in my life uh sisters that's you know clean toned all uh pretty much all throughout and steve wrote it for his sisters um and he just it's just got these pretty chords and again filled with these harmonics and just this beautiful main melody he's got going on that he just is lightly strumming down and then moving the chords around and playing over them. And man, just such a cool, cool, cool song. And, um, you know, then it ends up with uh, the breakdown. It's like the silent kind of, you know, tapping of the cymbals in just such a cool, like peaceful little solo way down here in the neck. So it's really high pitch and just really nice sounding. Really, 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 really pretty. And then it just, you get the synth comes in and then like a little bit of bang from the drums and you get that main melody pops back in except some more stuff going on gets a little bit more complicated and then it ends beautifully so uh, oh man that's one of my favorites off here too that's up there is one of them as well one of the most beautiful songs and prettiest songs i've ever heard you know oh man just absolute greatness and then we ended up with uh ended off with uh love secrets and that's that's another kind of short one that's just you know kind of um sliding around you know and riffing kind of it kind of is in the same kind of boat with um greasy kids uh, oh i almost forgot i'm sorry after greasy kid stuff we had alien water kiss which sounds like a freaking ufo landing and it's like a good 30 45 second track i think and then it goes to sisters and then love secrets which is kind of a cool ending kind of a chaotic blast of an end um and kind of the way it started with liberty so incredible masterpiece of an album right here right here in front of your eyes man if you never heard this thing you gotta you gotta listen to this especially if you're you know, I mean, this album got me into listening to instrumental music as a whole. So, you know, th this now, you know, I listen to all kinds of, you know, instrumental albums and stuff like uh, the instrumental stuff that's, that Ingrid Malmsteen's done. Um, I love Jason Becker and Marty Friedman. You know, all, Red Beach has got some cool, you know, um, jazz fusion type stuff out there on its fusion demos. I, I just love, love, love digging into um, some of my, Paul Gilbert, you know, was another one just instrumental music as a whole, and um, it can, th this opened it up to me many years ago that, you know, you don't gotta have lyrics to make this just such a, to make a beautiful, emotion-filled song, um, and Steve Vai just makes that very apparent on this record, so yeah, guys, I just, oh man, if I had to pick a least favorite off here, I'd maybe say, besides, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not really going to say like Greasy Kid stuff and Alien Water Kiss because those are kind of like mini songs in a way, kind of like interludes. They're so short. I would say probably Love Secrets because that one's a little bit longer than those two, enough to kind of warrant it being like a full song. So I'd say probably Love Secrets and maybe Answers, um, but even those songs are awesome. So it, it's a tough one, but yeah, this is a masterpiece of an album. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And, you know, this is the, it's 1990 when this thing came out, like I said. So we were, we've entered the 90s. There were only those two 80s um, Steve Vai solo albums. He's been, he was busy with other stuff. The next time we'll be looking at a band he formed, but it's still listed. They were calling themselves just Vi, like, um, at the time. Of course, Devin Townsend's on there. I'm forgetting the name of the bass player. Awesome guy, too. Um, that was Devin Townsend's first ever album he was ever on, too. So Steve found him, you know. And they were in a band called Vi on Sex and Religion, of course. But it's also still listed, uh, like if you look on the, the um, you know, side of the album there, on the spine of it, on the Sex and Religion album, it says Steve Vi's 
section religion, but I've seen in interviews he wanted to be called Vi, so it's kind of confusing. But it's still listed under his discography, like if you go on Wikipedia or Discogs or anywhere. So it's, you know, that, that's still getting counted up in here on the uh, album rankings. It's a Steve Vi album. Um, says it on the side. It also says Vi in the front of that album uh, when we look at it. And that's got vocals. You know, it's more like a whole band thing going on. So really, really cool different album we'll be looking at next time with Sex and Religion. Um, but let me know what you guys think about this masterpiece, if you've heard it or if you've not, or what you guys think about instrumental music. You know, I'd love to you know have some conversations about that and some of your guys' favorites and maybe some suggestions you guys can drop down to the bottom for me. But, um, yeah, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and tune in next time when we look at Sex and Religion. Like, subscribe, comment, and thanks.